I've done a lot of testing and research on the LG gaming monitor and put together my recommendations for what are the best settings you should be using to get the best performance from your ultra gear. My camera wasn't able to capture what you would see on the monitor, but I'll do my best to explain the experience. If you find value in this video, please help us reach our target 1000 subscribers by smashing that red button. There are eight game modes available. I normally personally use the Gamer 1 or Gamer 2 mode. It allows you to be more flexible with your settings and actually tune it down to how you would like to use the monitor. With all the other settings, there's some presets. Some of the options are greyed out. So I normally just use the Gamer 1 or Gamer 2 setting. MBR motion blur reduction. Now, when I did the G7 video, we had uh, a guy with all the answers comment on how MBR can be used if you had a steady frame rate of 144 hertz or 240 hertz on the G7. But in my personal opinion, I still think it's not good enough, especially when the brightness of the monitor is at below 400 nits, like the case with this monitor. The monitor uses backlight strobing to eliminate motion blur, which basically means one frame on, one frame off. This does normally introduce red artifacts, but LG has done a really good job in tuning this down. And my only concern is the flickering, as you can see, it's not good for your eye strain, especially if you're gonna use it for a prolonged period of time. Overclocking. Ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, if you do the calculation, it's hardly worth it. Someone like the Flash probably won't be able to even tell the difference uh, without counting the frames. It's not worth it between 165 and 180. If it was overclocked to 200 plus, then potentially, uh, but 15 frames is just not worth that at that level. I would much rather just have my monitor not get overworked uh, as well as my brain. The monitor supports FreeSync Premium and is G-Sync compatible. These usually work best if you're getting over 100 FPS. When your FPS does start falling, consider changing your response time. With the black stabilizer, I have this set to around 60 when I'm gaming. Now, this isn't ideal. The contrast ratio of this monitor is quite bad. So it looks quite washed out in terms of colors. I would turn this down if I was watching something, but generally I'll have it at 60. Talking about contrast ratio, this monitor isn't really suited for dark games. You won't be able to get enough shades of the black. Response time, probably something everyone's most interested in. Now, off and faster are not even on the table in my opinion. They don't really perform in any single situation that I've tested or researched. You should really just be picking between fast and normal. As a rule of thumb, if you're getting over 120 FPS or refresh rate, then you should go for fast. If it's below 100, I would recommend going for the normal one as that would give you the least overshoot, whereas fast will start overshooting when your frames drop. You can really use the UFO ghosting test really easily on your monitor to see the difference between them. I've tried showing it in this video here, but as I said, the camera's not able to capture it that well. So brightness is very room dependent. I would recommend just go a notch above what's the minimum you're okay with. Uh, you don't want to go too bright for a long period of time as that could be damaging for your eyes. But also if you're in a dark room, you really want to dim it down uh, to make sure you protect your eyes. For someone like me that uses a monitor for up to 10 hours in a day, I really am concerned with the eye strain and everything that could help protect my eye health and yours. I personally go between 60 and 100 brightness on this monitor. Uh, I do find with this one 100 is sometimes required whereas when I use the G7 I hardly find myself going on to 100 brightness. So it feels like this monitor is a little bit dimmer which is a shame but 100's plenty. I've never had issues where I've thought I need it to go any brighter. For contrast and sharpness settings, I use this test I found online, ESO test. I'll put a link in the description below. It really helps dial down your monitor's settings. I found both my sharpness and contrast settings to be between 60 and 70, pushing more towards 70 than 60. Anything higher would introduce noise in my opinion and anything lower will just reduce the quality of the image. With the contrast ratio, you can use the color bars, uh, which if you just search contrast on Google, 
uh, something like this will show up and you can use that to dial it down you should be able to see the maximum amount of the different blocks in this image uh, there will be a point where it's not going to increase or decrease that's probably the maximum setting you should go for gamma color temp rgb all the color settings are probably something you should use a calibration tool for if you haven't got a calibration tool like i haven't and most people don't then use a preset profile from artings.com they usually have a profile that i find sometimes can be more reliable than what you get from your manufacturer so it's worth checking it out so running this monitor with my laptop which is an rtx 2070 gpu i find 165 hertz more than enough in the games i play mainly warzone which to be fair i'm still kind of crap at but i still play it like many other people were just addicted to it for no reason i wouldn't recommend this monitor for low lit games or movies for that i would recommend have a look at the video that shows up now subscribe over and out